what are some of the things that go wrong with the prostate before we ever get to prostate cancer? What are some of the more common problems a prostate has? Well, certainly you could have infection or inflammation, something called prostatitis. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly common disease uh, that you see. Um, it has multiple different types of symptoms, frequency, urgency, burning, pain, uh, testicular pain, suprapubic pain, rectal pain. Um, and it's, some, it's an inflammation of the prostate gland. It can be caused by bacteria or it can be non-bacterial. It causes, so the, the burning, like you've heard, you know, I've heard men say, I am constantly in the bathroom at night. I have to, you know, frequent urination. That's caused from prostatitis? Not necessarily. That could be caused by something else called BPH, called benign prostatic hyperplasia, which is an enlargement of the prostate gland. So sometimes they get a little confusing whether it's prostatitis or BPH. Now, are these, is prostatitis? Uh, prostatitis a precursor to prostate cancer? Not necessarily. In fact, it isn't, but they often happen in the same age group. So BPH or the enlarging of the prostate typically happens in men starting at age 50 and older. The same type of population you oftentimes see prostate cancer in starting at age 50 or maybe a little bit younger too. So they happen in the same age group. So BPH happens in older men? It can, yes. You, typically it happens in an older gentleman, yes. Okay, so will you tell us then the, so, so, so are you saying that the three main things that happens to men's prostate is this BPH, Correct. The prostatitis, and prostate cancer? Correct. Is there anything else? Um, those are the major, more common things you see with problems with men with pro prostate problems, yes. Okay. Is there any way to prevent these? Um, prevention, um, of an enlarged prostate is, is fairly controversial. It's more treatment of the symptoms. Um, the typical symptoms you have from BPH are, can be classified either irritative symptoms, meaning frequency, urgency, getting up at night. You're talking about urgency of urine? Correct. Okay. Or nocturia, getting up at night. Or obstructive symptoms, slowing of your stream, hesitancy, the inability to feel like you're emptying your bladder. Those are typical symptoms that, that that make up BPH. And some men are bothered a little by them, some are bothered by a lot by them. There are things you can do to, to help with those symptoms. And, and, and the typical medications we use are, are pills or, or something called alpha blockers. They actually shrink or relax the, the muscle in the prostate or the bladder so that men are able to urinate more freely. The other medication you can use is something that will shrink the prostate. Um, and sometimes you need to use them both together. Oh, so if the prostate is enlarged, you can take medication to shrink it? If, if you have symptoms, you don't have to treat it. Just because you have a big prostate gland doesn't mean you're going to have symptoms. Well, I'll tell you something. I encountered a gentleman about two weeks ago. I was, in fact, informing people in the community about this program. And the gentleman said to me that he was pleased to see that we were doing this because he almost got in trouble with his wife a few years ago when he found it difficult to perform sexually. His wife thought he was having an affair and you know it caused some friction and he went to his pastor and told his pastor at his church about this and the pastor said to him he should go to the doctor to get a checkup and he found out that he had an enlarged prostate and that this was the problem why he didn't feel um, capable of performing sexually. So how common is this and you know um, what can men do if they have this problem what can they do how, how is this treated normally well certainly the issue of sexual performance is a very complex issue mm -hmm. and certainly it re revolves around the, the prostate um, and, and I'm sure we'll talk this a little later about prostate cancer and treatment and the side effects of treatment um, but it's not the whole issue with sexual function because there's other issues that factor in, whether it's um, um, other medications, um, um, state of mental, um, what's going on in your life, pressure, stress, work, etc. So it's, it's not just the prostate that oftentimes causes a problem with sexual function. Certainly it can. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of medicines that actually do it too, from blood pressure medicines to uh, cholesterol medicines. So you really have to uh, have full workup for erectile dysfunction. 
So if, the, if someone is unable to perform sexually, is it usually manifesting in erectile dysfunction or is it that they might just lack the desire for, uh, for um, sex if in fact the prostate is enlarged or inflamed? Um, sure. I mean, I think that, again, it's, it's, there are a lot of factors that go in it. Certainly in a large prostate can, can describe what you're talking about. But certainly the lack of, of sexual desire or libido could also be caused by low testosterone. So, so it's a very complex um, Now, is low prostate. testosterone related to the prostate? Well, the testosterone is made by the testicles mm -hmm. um, so that it's not directly related to the prostate. So the prostate sits inside your body, below the bladder, inside the pubis. So you can't, the only way you can feel the prostate is with an examination with your finger through the rectum. Okay? And, and the reason why you have trouble with an enlarged prostate is that it, it pushes or puts pressure on the tube that you urinate through. So, so if you have an enlarged prostate, some men have symptoms, some men don't. If you have, usually men have more symptoms, that enlargement occurs around the urethra tube. Um, and and that, that relates into what we call you know, obstructive symptoms. They have more trouble, trouble urinating, they have frequent urination, they have a slow stream, they have trouble emptying their bladder, they have hesitancy. That's a, basically a, f a pressure phenomenon. They, they, their bladder has to work overtime to push the urine through that small tube because it's being pushed upon by the benign gland that's growing. And this is inside the abdomen, you know, not actually in the, yeah. As opposed yeah. to the testicles, which yeah. are in the scrotum or the sac that, that outside the body. Um, can men live without the prostate? And if so, what are the side effects? Sure, men, yeah. men can live without a prostate. I mean, the, 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 two, the two side effects of, of surgery, which would be physically taking out the prostate, or prostatectomy, the, the two side effects are the, in a, the, the chance you may not be able to control your urine called incontinence, meaning you leak urine. And there can be, um, um, and the other one is the potential you lose your erections. And the reason that is, is there's small little nerve bundles that run alongside the prostate, okay? And they supply the, the vessels in the penis that allow blood flow to go into the penis and give you an erection. So when you do the surgery, potentially you can injure or damage those nerves and therefore end up being without erections. And now, is that now, person called impotent then? Correct. Now there are, there are ways to correct both of those issues. So if you're impotent, there are ways that um, medications, uh, uh, injections, other operations that can allow you to get an erection. And there are ways to correct if you can't control your urinary incontinent. So it's not a permanent problem. Are the treatment or medications um, that you would use to treat these particular um, diseases, would it be long-term, short-term? Well, I think if you, if you treat prostatitis, typically it's a, a short-term. Usually we use antibiotics or some non-steroidals or not anti-inflammatory medications. They can usually treat for a month or two or three months at a time until the symptoms resolve. Typically, if you're going to treat for an enlargement, those men have to go on these medications and take them daily, usually for, 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 the, for the, their life, unless they get tired of the medications or the medications stop working, and then you can go on to some other procedure, um, some procedure actually to relieve the obstruction, a surgical procedure, or, or to, to laser it or, or remove tissue or to microwave, some way to relieve the actual obstruction. Thank you. What kinds of things can be done to either prevent prostate cancer at least slow down you know one's probability of, of having problems with the prostate. 